welcome to a special broadcast. My name is Anthony Martinez. Today we are joined by the host of MSNBC's Hardball, Chris Matthews. In addition to Hardball, Chris Matthews serves as the moderator of The Chris Matthews Show, a weekly syndicated political roundtable program. A Roman Catholic born in Philadelphia to Irish-American parents, Chris Matthews graduated from Holy Cross College in Massachusetts. After graduation, Matthews served in the United States Peace Corps for two years as a trade development advisor. Before entering, before entering journalism, Matthews worked as a member of the United States Capitol Police, a presidential speechwriter during the Carter administration, and was a top aide to the longtime Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill. Matthews has covered American presidential campaigns since 1988 and has authored several New York Times bestsellers. A father of three grown children, Matthews currently resides in Chevy Chase, Maryland, with his wife, a fellow journalist. Today, Chris Matthews will join us to discuss the current political climate, the midterm elections, and the performance of President Barack Obama to date. Let me first begin by saying what an honor it is to have you join Thanks, us Anthony. today. It's great to be there, yeah. Thank you. How has the political climate changed between today and when you worked on the Hill uh, for, for Speaker well, O'Neill? Well, I'm going to talk about it tonight. It's, um, it's gotten worse. Um, there's no, um, what would you call it, collegiality between uh, the parties. There's no uh, friendships, surprising friendships. You don't come across many anymore. Uh, there's um, very little real bipartisanship. If you just look at the, uh, the health care bill with 60 Democrats and uh, FinRAG was basically Democrats, and you don't see the bills like civil rights back in the 60s, which were uh, very bipartisan. Um, maybe, and you don't see um, a lot of happy people. They don't seem to enjoy the political life like they did. They used to love it, maybe because it was much less, um, it was much less scrutiny. Uh, you didn't have all the rules and all the reports you had to file and the, you know, you can't take a gift of over a certain amount, you can't go to dinner with the wrong person. There's a lot of that uh, restriction that you didn't have before. No. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of fun anymore and I'm not sure it's that effective anymore. Uh, so much of it is um, one party, instead of keeping the other party honest, they sort of keep them from being honest. If a party tries to do something on revenues and reduce, reduce the deficit, they're nailed. If they try to do something on entitlements, reduce the, revenue, the uh, uh, deficit, they're nailed. If a party wants to uh, oppose a war, they're nailed. You know, it's very yeah. hard. It's not like you, the, the system should be based on checking each other to be better, when in fact it sort of brings everyone down. There's a lot of that today. I don't want to be too negative, but um, I, don't, I don't really like the way it's going. Many would be surprised to find out that in 2000 election, presidential election, you voted for George W. Bush. Would be surprised? Well, I think it was, uh, I think I was disappointed in Bill Clinton's behavior. And I thought that the uh, Democratic candidate, Al Gore, was running a, a negative, pessimistic campaign based on fear rather than a positive campaign. I don't know why he ran that kind of campaign. It wasn't worthy of Al Gore. And I think he could have ran a campaign that would have ran on the Clinton record on economics. Instead, he ran away from Bill Clinton. And that was a mistake. I think his mistake was tying himself to Bill Clinton after the Monica mess, or during it, and then separating himself from Clinton when it came to the record. He should have done just the opposite. He should have separated from the Monica mm -hmm. mess and identified with the record. Uh, I don't think he handled it right. Um, I also thought, incorrectly, that George Bush had good instincts that his anti-intellectualism uh, was a p pose, not a reality. He was simply against elitism. And in fact, I think he was uh, very unprepared to be president in terms of academic background. I don't think he had the intellectual preparation to be president and was taken over by the neoconservatives. So obviously I was against the war. I mean, I, that's yes. probably why it surprises everybody. I thought the, worst or the first uh, Gulf War was wrong. Okay. I think that was really what got us in trouble. Once we start getting involved over there and this grudge about he tried to kill my father, yeah. and you know all that stuff. Yeah. Right? Even with all of President Obama's accomplishments, such as health care, financial regulation, and the end of combat operations in Iraq, voters still perceive Barack Obama as incompetent. Do they? Uh, well, yes. What, what number do you look at there to get that incompetent? I didn't think I've seen that. Um, it's 49 in the poll released today by NBC. Yeah. 
and the Wall Street Journal, 49% disapprove of Obama's job performance. Well, they don't, they don't like what he's doing. That's not the same as incompetence. They don't agree with his policies. They don't like the stimulus. They don't like the health care. They probably aren't thrilled by FinReg. They uh, give him some credit for Iraq based upon the poll today. But I'm not sure people don't think he's a, br a brilliant guy. Well, I, I think there's... Yeah, I'm not sure. I, what you may be getting out of his executive skills, which aren't great. But, which not, you, but I, I haven't seen... I do criticize them, but I haven't... Because I don't get a really good sense of uh, a chain of command like I did in previous presidents. But I've been basically non, not that critical of Obama. I've been very hopeful that he will be a successful president. I've tried to be a constructive critic. On today's show, um, mm -hmm. and on Friday's show, you mentioned how uh, there needs to be somewhat of a change they in, need to bulk in it the up. White House. They need to bulk it up. Hillary well, Clinton. Well, the, yeah, I think Hillary Clinton would be great at Secretary of Defense. I think that's coming anyway. I don't have to push it too hard because I think it's coming. I think that uh, they need to solidify the Clinton-Obama uh, alliance, and I think they have to do it in a dramatic way, and I think making her Secretary of Defense is the right way. I think if they make her uh, the vice presidential running mate, I think that's a signal of weakness. Don't you? Yes. Okay, but making your Secretary of Defense is an upgrade uh, without declining a reduction in the President's authority. But, but I also think they need a, a strong Chief of Staff. And now that Rahm Emanuel is apparently running for uh, yeah. mayor of uh, Chicago, but I already said this on Friday, it ought to be Bloomberg. Somebody strong. And maybe uh, Cohen Powell, a really strong COO to carry out the President, uh, his authority. He has not had a strong chain of command that I've been able to see. And I think it's weakened him. Why do you believe that 61% of Americans feel that things are off? Um, because we have headed a 9.6% unemployment rate. What can Obama do in addition? Reduce the rate. But he can, right, in the short run. I mean, yeah, he's going like, to have to. Uh, I mean, there are a number of cosmetic things he can do. I mean, I do think that um, he has not uh, really uh, connected as well as president as he connected as a candidate. Okay. And I don't know what to say about it except that I was analyzing it today. He was very effective and, in fact, inspirational, as everybody knows, in my case, uh, when he talked about our country and what you can get done in this country as a person and how he has been able to get done as a person. And I think since he's been president, you've, he's lacked that inspirational quality that he had as a candidate. And I don't, I think it's that he used to talk about the country. Americans like other Americans talking about the country. It's what we share. They like to hear the the love song, really, of America. They want to hear that. And if they don't hear that, they wonder what the politician's up to. They want to hear it a lot. It's like uh, people who live in San Francisco. Yeah. You know what they want to hear people say? How much they like San Francisco. And um, I worked out there. I ran, worked for the newspaper for 15 years. People like Americans who like America. And, he asked, and you have to keep saying it. Okay. And I'm not sure he's been that effective. It sounds cosmetic. It sounds formal, but I think these things matter. Okay. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Much more with Chris Matthews when we return.